Good morning. Good morning. We will call this work session to order. Thank you for being here this morning. Public comment. Clerk, do we have public comment? Yes, I am. Okay, we have four individuals who have signed up. We respect our citizens' right to address their government in this meeting. However, I intend to enforce our three-minute rule in order for this meeting to run effectively and efficiently. Once you reach your three minutes, you will be allowed to finish your sentence, and then the floor will be taken back by me. Please avoid campaigning or personal attacks against personnel or officials. We should be handled in another forum other than a body uh, such as this. The first uh, citizen on the road, or should I say on this uh, registration today, is Mr. Larry Pierce. Mr. Pierce, would you please come forth, uh, state your address and your subject matter, please. Well, I'll tell you what. Larry Pierce, 4120 Van Sant Road, Douglas, New Georgia. Um, you know, for some of us, your life is exciting. Matter, Mr. Pierce, your subject matter. Is it transportation center? Ma'am? Your subject matter. Is it transportation center? What is your subject matter this morning? It's transparency. Oh, transparency. I couldn't see. Okay. Transparency. And okay. the corner. Okay. And the corner. I, did, I, was, I, I probably didn't spell it right. Okay. <laughs> it it looked like transportation. Yeah. Well, what I started to say was when I was younger, they said life gets a little dull the older you get. Well, it just depends on what frame of mind you are. You see, I've been self-employed for since 74, and I never got a gold watch for retirement. And when you retire, I think you start to retard. But I assure you, it's what you make. And, and, and you're looking at somebody this morning that looks like he just got up under the Christmas tree and got the brand new toy. And the reason I say that it was yesterday at 5 o'clock, I was one of 500 people to be interviewed for Shark Tank. And there's my band, okay? And that band ain't coming off for two weeks. I was number 351. It was held at the Camcast uh, home office, about 15 stories high behind the stadium, over what they call a battery. So. They said, if you get a call in two weeks, exactly two weeks, you're moving up the ladder and you'll be flown up to California to do some more interviews. It's a long way from getting on the show, I assure you. But if you don't get a phone call, that's the end of it. All right. And what I talked about was this here, and I never showed it to y'all, but this is a police defense board. I worked on it four years since Ferguson and the issue in Ferguson. This will stop all low velocity bullets shot out of a handgun. This will stop a 357 Magnum, a 44 Magnum, nine millimeters, and all of them. Now, police don't get killed here. They get killed in the neck and the head. This is a light here that's high intensity. This is a taser that nobody is going to suspect. You got a taser built into it right here. Got it free from the taser company. This here's a little extra lighting I put onto it. Anyway, that's the end for that. Four years and probably, I don't know. If you had to pay for what I got here, it would probably be about $10,000. Now, what I do want to talk about real quick, and I know my three minutes are rolling, but I'm going to put commas on the end of the sentence. Yeah. This here is transparent. Okay? I've been in plastics 50 years. This is transparent. Transparent means you can see through. A lot of few people like to use the word, we're transparent government. That's true and it ain't true. This here is translucent. Translucent is where you can kind of make out a figure behind it, but you can't see it good. This here is opaque, which means you can't do through it at all. Now, I want to tell you something real quick, the last sentence. The coroner last week fired Wayne Rogers. Now, y'all have the duty to see the interpretation of the law when you went back in retrospect and hired the two 
from the one she hired. She hired Wayne Rogers. Wayne Rogers was demoted from chief to regular and actually became chief. Now she's got two, Usher and Willie Watkins, and actually, actually she's got three, because she might go to work. She's got three, okay? Now, if she hires another one, and I've been told she's going to, but Mr. Teal, Madam Chair, and you commissioners have got to interpret the law that she's got to come to you, because it says that. It says that upon hiring more than one, she comes to you. And when she comes to you, you know what the answer is? No. You know why it's no? Because she's always over budget. And Santa ain't around no more. Thank Mr. You. Pierce, thank you. All right, well, thank you so much, Mr. Um, Mr. Pierce. We'll take this matter under advisement. Um, next, we have Heather Dennis. Heather, please come forward and give us your state your address and your subject matter this morning. Good morning. Hi, my name is Heather Dennis. I live in the Fair Play area of Southern Douglas County. My subject matter is the $1.4 million Greta overage. On April 17th, during the Transportation Committee meeting, it was reported that the Greta project had been audited. Thank goodness this audit, audit was conducted. The audit brought about some very important information that concerns me greatly as we are on the cusp of another potential transportation project, the proposed bus system. If I understood correctly, and please correct me if I'm wrong, we neglected to properly manage the greater project, thereby overspending $1.4 million that the taxpayers will take the hit for by dipping into the general fund to reconcile the books. What I struggle to understand is this. As it was discussed in the meeting, the Greta project was being funded by a grant, much like the proposed bus system will if it is approved. The grant, the grant for Greta ended in 2012, leaving the taxpayers and or the state, it wasn't very clear, to pay for it. What's curious though is that not one in that meeting on April, 7, April 17th seemed to know that the grant had expired six years ago and no one knew what expenses were reimbursable by the state and what ones were not moving forward. So for the past six years, we've been spent, we've been operating a service that no one took the time to understand the financials or rule of to the tune of $1.4 million. So here are my questions. Who is in charge of this project and what are the ramifications for their neglect and oversight that has been ongoing for six years? The Transportation Committee, the Finance Committee, multi Multimodal Transportation Center, how is it that out of all of those people in the transportation meeting on April 17th, not one knew how the Greta service was run or that the grant had expired six years ago? Three, how can the transportation committee expect the citizens to find it acceptable to use general fund money to bail out the person or team of folks who did not properly manage this project? What assurances are there to the citizens by the BOC that this type of project management will be avoided if the proposed bus system moves forward? I'll answer that one, none. This board did not even think it worthwhile to conduct a feasibility study to see what it would cost to run this bus system. You all know that in, I in no way support your proposed bus system based on your display of disregard for lawful processes and procedures. I represent a lot of folks in this county who feel just like me. The gross negligence of the Greta project only adds fuel to that fire. It further proves that there is good reason for the citizens of Douglas County to question their local officials' transparency, stewardship of taxes and resources, management skills, and integrity. I didn't even touch on the $15 million TAM that hit the news this weekend. A parting question. <clears throat> what is the true state of Douglas County? <clears throat> Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Dennis. Um, we'll take this matter in the advisement. I'll be more than happy to meet you personally to respond to your questions. We will meet one-on-one, -on -one, me and you, so I would love to. Jovian, if you could set that up, I'll be more than happy to meet you. Next, we have Ms. Don Leonard. Ms. Don, please come forward and give us your address and your subject matter. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Dawn Leonard, Creekside Manor Subdivision in District 2. Maybe I can answer that one for you, Heather. Madam Chairwoman, during your State of the County address, you stated, and I quote, our economy is healthy and we are thriving. Our financial position is robust and our credit position is very strong. 
We continue to sustain the highest AA2 bond rating comparable to counties our size, and our reserve fund is healthy. That was April 12th. On April 19th, one week later, finance recommends requests for bids due to cash flow problems. Now that's a hustle if I've ever heard one. Madam Chairwoman, it takes a lot of audacity to stand in front of the whole county telling taxpayers what great financial shape we are in knowing it's not true. If we were in such great financial shape, you would not be, asked, you would not be taking this action. You stated that the last administration left us eight and a half million in the hole. Now we'll be more than 15 million in the hole. We'll not be able to meet our obligations without securing this loan. That's embarrassing. <clears throat> How did the chairman of the finance committee and you, Madam Chairman, this is your budget, allow us to find ourselves in such rough waters? How about we admit to making some mistakes and change course? <clears throat> We cannot afford a new senior center or a new recreation center. Why are we spending SPLOS money on projects we cannot afford or support? Let's call a referendum in November and repurpose the SPLOS money for paving and intersection improvements that are so desperately needed. Why are you still going forward with plans for your so-called pilot bus system? You can put lipstick on this pig, but it is still a pig. You're reckless with your spending and everybody in the county is watching. <clears throat> now, I'm no math major, but if our budget is approximately $95 million, we should have close to a $24 million fund balance to be a fiscally responsible county. You were elected to be good stewards of our money, but the performance is poor. The real state of the county? Douglas County is in danger due to mismanagement, lack of oversight, and reckless spending. Whether you like it or not, you ultimately answer to us. We demand accountability. And you are right about one thing, Madam Chairwoman. The direction and the destiny of our county does indeed lie in our hands. Douglas County, vote accordingly. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Leonard. And also with you, I would love to sit down individually with you and respond to your questions and show you some information that would probably change your opinion at this point. But I appreciate you, Jody. Can you also set up a meeting with Ms. Leonard as well? And we will meet one-on-one. -on -one. And I would love to provide lunch as well. Okay? Next, last but not least, we have David King. Mr. King, come forward. Please state your address and your subject matter. Good morning. Good morning. The address. 2991 Highway 78 in the Oakdale area. Uh, I am a designer of business signs. We manufacture them, we design them. I have a client at this address. Um, the codes for business sign lighting in that area says it has to be external lighting only. The code, from what I understand, is about 10 to 15 years old. I inquired as to why and the reasoning behind that particular code. What I found out is it is not an issue of safety. They no longer build business signs the same way that they did 15 years ago. Uh, they're a lot safer. Um, what I was told was it's probably aesthetics. I understand aesthetics. The problem with aesthetics is if you have that area full of businesses that are moving in, wanting to do business signs, everybody has their own branding. And when you limit what they can do and how they present their businesses in the way of a business sign, number one, you're asking everybody to do the same thing and look the same way. And we all know every business is different. So you're limiting businesses on how they portray, how they portray the branding and what they do. Um, so I'm looking uh, to find out for my clients and future clients for that area. After all, you know, you're trying to build business in the area. So don't take away the tools that businesses need to represent themselves. Uh, so I, I'm here looking for relief. I'm here looking for to find out what we can do about the cold. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, we will take this matter under advisement now. I will ask my county administrator to respond to you, Mark Till, and we will respond to you. <coughs> Mark is right here. We will 
Well, uh, do you have a telephone number if you could give that to Jovine? Yes. <coughs> and we will respond. Thank you. Mr. King. Thank you so much. And we appreciate you coming in. Jovine, get your information. Next, we have the approval of the minutes. You have the minutes before you. You have these minutes. Please take a look at them, uh, commissioners, and be prepared to um, vote accordingly tomorrow. Proclamations, we have uh, two proclamations on the agenda, and that will be for tomorrow. And these proclamations about uh, the Older Americans uh, Month in Douglas County and also proclaiming the month of May is mental health in Douglas County. So we have Liz Fitcher for the um, Americans old old Americans Act and then also for proclaiming the month of May uh, for mental health. We don't have a name for tomorrow. Commissioner Robinson's working on that. Okay. County Administrator, do you have anything before we go? Uh, yes ma'am, one thing. I'd like to introduce my new ex executive assistant we just recently hired. Hello. Jessica Theriol. Hey Jessica. Welcome. Thank so today's you. her first day, so <laughs> <laughs> you're you so welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, tab number six. Uh, there are about seven business items today, and it's tab number six is authorization to create a position for a full-time juvenile public defender to handle delinquency, C-H-I-N-S, and J-C-A-T-S data entry. Uh, Judge Peggy Walker. Actually, I'm Judge Harrison. Harrison. Yeah, Harrison. I'm, I'm in sorry. I'm sorry. Um, thank you, Judge Harrison. Thank you. Um, we are asking that you authorize um, us to fill a full-time juvenile public defender. Um, as you may or may not be aware, our prior public defender, um, Leah Brumbelow, passed away last November. From that time until this time, we have tried to um, hire people individually to carry on the workload, um, and it has not been fruitful with that attempt due to the um, hourly rate of billing um, for these kinds of cases. So we are asking that you allow us to create this position. I don't know how deep I need to get into um, figures and that sort of stuff, but we um, have provided some numbers in regard to what our costs were in 2016 and 2017. Um, and so we came up with a figure that's less than that um, to carry the delinquency cases, the CHINs, Children in Need of Services, and the JCATS, and that's the one acronym. I don't know what it stands for, but it is data entry that's required for us to maintain um, public defender work. So previously when Ms. Bromelow was here, um, so we spent and this was an outside contract. We spent 100,000 in 16, 102,000, right at 100,000 in 17. So this position would essentially replace that outside contract. Um, and what is being requested by the judges is uh, 70,000 plus benefits, which is less than what we were paying Mr. Bumlow's for. And this would be an in house, a proposed in house position. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners? Commissioner Geider? Uh, can one person take the place of, of Liz? Uh, no. <laughs> Probably not. Um, of course, I. she's going to, she, it's not a she. The person who gets that position will eventually need support staff. Um, <clears throat> but Judge Walker seems to think that between now and the end of the year, only one person would be needed. Um, I handle all of the delinquency in Chin's cases, um, and we run court almost every day. Um, no. There's there's not another firm that would like to take this contract up? That I don't know. I don't know what was provided out um, in the community to take on this position, but when we offered the contract, a 90-day contract with the opportunity to um, extend it for another 90 days to get us to June 1st, um, we had two applicants. And we hired one of the, actually we hired one for this position and, and one for another, so. So you know, the $75,000 is just for this year, finish, to finish out this year? I assume. Well, it'd be prorated. So it wouldn't be the full seven. Oh, okay. 
but then next year you may need support. I feel staff. confident that next year that in our budget proposal in August we'll be asking <clears throat> for at least a part-time support staff for this person. And you also did some research on what other <clears throat> yes. counties? We, okay, so generally speaking, the state of Georgia has a public defender council system. Mm -hmm. We are one of maybe seven counties in the state that are an opt-out county, which means that the council doesn't tell us what to do. We do what we want to do with understanding that we follow within guidelines. It's sort of a general understanding. Um, and so we researched what all the other counties did in terms of their juvenile public defender, and it really varied. Um, some had hourly rates and just you know people that circulated on a list. Some um, had um, like a duty lawyer that would be present for a week and take any cases that come through at that time frame. Um, Cobb County was probably the closest related county where they had a juvenile public defender um, office. So they had several attorneys and they were paid yearly based upon their experience, um, you know, just depending on the number of years experience. Um, I can probably tell you what their high end and low end was. It seems like uh, there needs to be some continuity there uh, to take these cases and everything and not have them scattered. No. Well, we have to maintain a conflict list anyway because when you have cases that involve, you know, more than one accused, then, of course, the public defender can't take on more than one. So if you have a, a case where there's... No, I just meant somebody that was familiar with that oh. case to be there. Yes. <laughs> if, yes. If something popped up. Yes. I, I wasn't talking about the okay. uh, additional uh, defendants. Right. I yield back. Okay. Any other questions for the mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Tab number seven, authorization to approve the continuation of Douglas County Lee Road small area plan study with the existing consultant Clark, Patterson, and Lee, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Roberts, this morning. Good morning. Thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. So, about September 6th of last year, they, the uh, original kickoff for the Lee Road small area study began and it's been ongoing, we're about halfway through that study. Um, and the opportunity now is for an extension of that so that we can completely go from Chapel Hill all the way up to I-20 on the Lee Road Corridor. Rebecca Kiefer is here with me from Clark, Patterson and & Lee. And what we're asking today is uh, to use the use of the plus funds to extend that existing study from Chapel Hill to I-20 along that corridor. Good morning, Madam Chairman, uh, Board of Commissioners. Um, my name is Rebecca Kiefer with Clark Patterson Lee. Um, we're here, uh, we've been asked by staff to put together a proposal to uh, extend the study. Um, in part, that is to on the existing Lee Road where they're extending um, that cross section and enlarging it, being able to anticipate and plan for the land uses that could go in there. Um, so that's part of the benefit of this. Uh, what it will also do um, from Bomar Road to west to Chapel Road, it would give you um, some preliminary concepts for what uh, that Lee Road alignment would look like. Um, we, would, we would develop a couple of concepts. Uh, and then it would also um, allow us to do some additional public outreach and uh, with the final plan, produce um, some artistic renderings so that it, it makes your plan a little bit more visual. Um, just as a brief update on the Lee Road study, um, since we haven't been um, before the public in some time, we uh, kicked off to the public at the September Saturdays event and got some really great input from that, just initial, and, and started to uh, introduce the plan to the public. 
since then we've um, conducted an analysis of your existing plans, uh, some stakeholder interviews, community survey that we got uh, about 300 respondents. And what we've seen consistent throughout all of those uh, input opportunities um, for the Lee Road area, the extension area, is uh, a desire for community space, uh, probably civic, uh, a, a civic body of that, and um, more walkability uh, and, and some mixed use development. So that's kind of where we are now, and um, we'd like to uh, probably release uh, a couple of concepts that will be refined after speaking with staff. Uh, to the Board of Commissioners and then release them to the public, uh, hopefully at the Hydrangea Festival. Thank you so much. So the existing project, the existing study goes from uh, Fairburn Road to Beaumont. And so what is proposed is to extend both ways. So from Fairburn Road along Lee Road all the way to I-20 and then on the other side all the way to Chapel Hill Road which is essentially that east-west connector, southern bypass, or that <coughs> the southern arc, what it's been called a couple of different things over the years. But, um, so that's what we're talking about. Any questions from the board? Mr. Geiger. <coughs> How much? <laughs> uh, do we don't have a dollar amount on this at all? Uh, yes, ma'am. The, uh, <coughs> the Transportation Subcommittee recommended that the cost not to exceed uh, seventy-five thousand for the study. The existing study in place was was seventy-five thousand. We've um, utilized uh, about thirty-five thousand of that from the original study. So you can't get a grant for a study. Can we no, not that I'm aware of. I mean, there are grants out there, but not that I'm aware of on this one. Even though it's a, like a transportation thing, you can't get. Grant money? No, no, ma'am. Not that we're aware of. No. Okay, so the, uh, Chris, this is to take Chris it from Beaumont Road over to Chapel Hill. We've done half of it. Well, actually, this what we have. The current project is from Fairburn Road to Beaumont. This would extend it both ways. So from Fairburn Road to I twenty, and then the other way from Beaumont to Chapel Hill. From Fairburn Road to I twenty. Fairburn Road crosses I-20. Yeah, Lee Road. I so Lee Road from Fairburn Road to I-20. Okay. That we've already, we're in the middle of doing right now. No, the current study is from Fairburn Road to Beaumont. There's no, the road doesn't exist yet. Right there where the tractor supply and the... Uh, Lee Street. Yeah. 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 Okay. So the road is started and we still had maps up there. It'd be nice to yeah. <laughs> so have a map up there so we can visualize this stuff. <laughs> so we, we rode from Fairburn to I-20 exists and it's being um, widened. And so what this, this, that portion of that study that we would do would be do a land use study along that corridor because the widening will um, trigger some market conditions. Um, what we would want to do is anticipate some of those, some of the interest in development there and actually plan for what that would look like along that. So that's what we would do along Kind of like an overlay? Potentially, that, that could come out of it. Okay. And uh, so this is just an extension, but you know, I heard this morning about a, a shortage of, of the Lee Road thing, but that doesn't have anything to do with the, the study itself, right? That doesn't have anything to do with this. Okay. All right. Are you back? Okay, any other questions? <coughs> Commissioner Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> All right, so where is the source of this money coming from? That's the general question. Um, it was recommended by the Transportation Committee to use SPLOS funds. Mm -hmm. right. And in SPLOS, there's what, a certain amount set aside for economic development? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And that was what, about $10 million? Yes, sir. How much have we spent so far, just in general? Um, as far as allocated, we have 75000 currently allocated for this project. Two hundred and something thousand for the traffic signal at uh, Riverside and Rock House. One eighty allocated. We haven't spent for uh, the street lights on Riverside, and I think that's it. Okay. What programming is going along with the rest of the money? Do you know? Um, we've discussed some projects, but none yet. Mm -hmm. So no programming yet. No programming. So we've got about what? 
nine, eight million dollars left in economic development within the SWAS. Nine million plus, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when will we get the results, official results from the, the phase one? I'm going to call it phase one. Oh, Lee Road, the Lee Road say. Um, we would wrap them both up together now to where the report would probably just be uh, delayed a little bit just with the extended scope. So um, late summer, I think, is, is what I have in the schedule. August. I'd like to see a, sort of a milestone at least. You know, when we're talking about expanding scopes of work, we want to at least bring the first one to some point of sort of acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. You think we can get a sort of an update on that, though, officially before you put the final wrapper together? I like to keep them separate. I like to understand it better. Yes, that'd be great, Commissioner. We could uh, work with the uh, CPL to get a presentation for the next, maybe next work session if it haven't missed that timeline. Mark? Yep, we've, we've got some concepts ready to present, so we'd be happy to. Okay. Okay. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. How are you? I have just one question for you. With this study, um, you talked about surveys that's already gone out the 300 in your mm -hmm. the event at September Saturdays. Do you have that anywhere uh, in a format so it can be available okay. to the citizens, perhaps yes. uh, Director Roberts? Yes, um, Madam Chair. We, we, um, we, we have uh, some data from the fa Facebook and the social media and also um, um, the presentation, uh, kind of a draft <coughs> presentation that we were preparing for the whole board, mm -hmm. and we, but we can have that available. Yeah, once you provide it to the board, then you'll make yes. it public. Okay. Yes, and, but, and there's some interesting meetings. things in there, you know, um, that, that have come back from the citizens in that area, so we look forward to sharing it with you. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're excited. Any other questions from the board? Thank you all so much for this presentation. Thank you. Tab number eight, authorization to approve the preliminary plat for Legacy Park Drive landlots. Um, 1011 and 1012, 18th District, second section, and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Here again, Director Roberts. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, thank you. Uh, we wanted to uh, bring this, this item forward to February 6th of the PNC and, and Commissioner meeting to approve the plat for 40 homes in Legacy Park. Um, we have a, the developer here uh, to, to speak on behalf of this. But what we'd be asking for is for you to approve the preliminary plat and sign sign off so that they can begin construction. If you want to add anything. Sure. Yeah, good morning. Could you state your name for us? Please? Sure. I'm Jeff Wilkerson, and I'm actually with the civil engineering firm for uh, working with D.R. Horton on this project. And, um, it's to create 40 single family lots from what was I believe it's 70 plus units that were incorporated into quadplexes. Mm -hmm. um, so this has already been through a rezoning or as an amendment of the previous zoning to allow it. It's been approved and so this is just for the preliminary plat. Okay. Any questions from the board? Commissioner Geiger? Again, maps. <laughs> I'd love to see this on a map. This you, you have a name out there. Where is Legacy? It is a Legacy Park. Oldly and Highway 92. It's where? I'm sorry. Oldly Road and Highway 92. It's Nine the uh, like condos, the townhomes that are just off Fairburn Road. That we uh, changed the plan and so it was supposed to be yes, separate units. It would have been 72 townhomes. And um, I believe it first came before the PNZ it's in November, it's table. Like and, then, and then we heard it in February the mm -hmm. 6th. Do you have a copy of the preliminary plat with you? Yes, it did. So these are going to have four units per building, right? No, ma'am, that would be single family. Single family. Yeah. Single family. Yeah. 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 They were. They were four. Okay. Correct. I had it backwards. Sorry about that. Okay, another question from the board of Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. They don't want to say that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't know where to put All right, tab number nine, authorization to solicit bids for the 2018 TAN in the amount of $15 million. Um, Director Holman, if you could go to the podium on this so you uh, sure. can discuss our history with TANs in Douglas County. This is not our first one, though, so if you could explain <coughs> TANs, it just would be a great time. TANs or tax anticipated notes. Good morning. Uh -huh. Jennifer Hallman, Finance Director. Just bear with me. 
kind of have some sinus things going on. Um, but yes, a 10 is a tax anticipation note. Um, and it is very common for county governments or governments, cities, counties, uh, to use this since around 55 to 60 percent of our revenue come in the last two months of the year. Um, <clears throat> I looked at it in history and about 5 percent of our revenue comes in every month <clears throat> and about 8 percent, we spend about 8 percent every month because we're, like most governments, service oriented. It's usually payroll and benefits that is the majority of our expenditures. So this is just a uh, financing vehicle uh, in order for cash flow purposes, um, in order for us to borrow the money so that we can maintain our operations um, until our tax um, revenues come in. And when they come in, uh, we can then pay it off. It's got to be paid by the end of the year. It's a short-term loan. Um, and matter of fact, we can actually pay it off early. We did last year when tax revenues came in more than projected. Instead of paying them off in December 31st, we actually paid them off in the end of November. And if things continue to be like they were last year, we plan on doing the same thing this year. And I believe there's a trend. We've had probably the last 10 years when I look back, tax tans were, we've mm -hmm. been uh, actually reaching out and borrowing tans for many years. So yes. Yes, ma'am, we have. Um, the only, there was one year that we did not borrow TAN, um, but that was just because we had um, money from <clears throat> the, we had some excess money from a tax abatement that came in that we were using for the Bleakley building. Mm -hmm. And so we were not spending that money um, right away. We waited until we had the construction on the Bleakley building. But yes, over the past, you know, back to 2008, we borrowed money, and like I said, it's just a short-term note. We work with purchasing. We make sure we reach out to all the local banks as well, not just the big banks. Um, everybody that we know of that contacts Bill or that's on the list, we send out um, for them to submit a proposal if they wish to do so. Yeah, it's, it's not uncommon. I actually had a great class uh, for, at ACCG, <coughs> I'm very proud of that class to calm me down with TANS as well, because I said, ooh, but it, it, it's common. And uh, some counties actually borrow 200 million, so you're just a little drop in the bucket compared to some counties in Georgia that borrowed $200 million in TANS. And it, and it can be misunderstood, you know, not, not understanding what a tax anticipation note is, as if we're spending frivolously or we're out of reserves. This is only just a balance sheet transaction. Yep. This is just cash flow. The example I use is if you make, you know, if I told you whatever your salary was, you're only going to get, you know, um, 20, let's say you're only going to get 40% of your salary for the first nine months of the year, but you have all your bills you have to pay are the same, the same amount each month. Then what you're going to have to do in those first nine months, you're going to have to go to the bank or go to your parents, <laughs> go to the bank and borrow the money. Um, uh, so this is no different. We're just, you know, the cash flow, the money coming in, our largest major revenue source is taxes, as is all other governments. And because of the way they're collected at the end of the year, mm -hmm. this is just a cash flow mechanism. Absolutely. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners? Commissioner Davis. Yes, uh, and we did it last year. Uh, same about the same time, but with the same amount of money, it, it, we went up from 12 million to 15 million. What about the year before? Uh, that's in 16 is when we did not borrow. We didn't borrow any. What about in 15? We borrowed uh, three million. In 14, so the we, trend is kind of going up. Mm -hmm. But you've had 15 million before. You yeah, I mean, we've we've borrowed back in 2011. We borrowed in March and we borrowed 18 million. But the year we didn't borrow any was the year we had leaking money plus animal shelter. We had funds. lost excess money from the jail, and then we had. You need the, to explain that uh, to the public because you have to exhaust all yes fund balance, whether it's uh, assigned or unassigned. Correct. You have to exhaust all that before you can. You have borrow. to show a need, um, and what that means is any cash that is available to use that's not legally restricted, um, you have to show that you're using that money to meet all of your expenditures. That you can't put money aside um, that is not legally restricted and say we're not going to touch that. You literally have to show the need in order to ha come up with what they call a maximum cumulative deficit. 
you come up with that deficit and then the statute allows you to borrow a cushion, a working capital is what they call it, but a cushion. So if anything comes up um, that you're unaware of, or we hope that there's not, but we always like to have a little bit of a cushion in there um, of about $2 million just to make sure that we're covered. You know, if there's anything that happens with tax collections, if the bills go out late, you just never know. And it's it's May, we won't know about the digest and all that until the middle of the year and the tax bills go out. So we like to, we don't want to have to come to you twice. We want to be able just to come to you one time with a little bit of a cushion and to go out to bid and have the funds and draw on those funds. And then when we have the sufficient funds to pay it off, we pay it off. But um, do you reinvest the money in, um, while you're holding it and you don't need it? We do. We sometimes we just reinvest in just the bank the bank account that it's held in, just because it's such short term. Mm -hmm. You know, getting a three month or six month yeah. CD, you just don't want to restrict yourself too much. But yeah, it's just not it's not sitting in a non interest bearing account. It's sitting in a in a bank account that's earning interest, so that we're allowed to earn interest. And right now, the interest rates, even though they've gone up a, still, you know, because the economy they gone up, they're still attractive in this type of market. Uh, so we'll pay interest, but it'll take a lot of month to put the bids out there and get them in and all that. So it'll be about <coughs> June before. It will actually be, tomorrow. it's a quick turnaround. We asked for authorization for tomorrow. I've worked with Bill. He's on go. He's ready to go out to bid, send out the ads and everything. The bids will come back next Friday, the 11th. Um, and then we will be looking at that, whoever has the lowest interest rate, and we look at all the costs associated, it will be brought to you the next meeting. So to we may be borrowing about a half a month earlier. About a couple of weeks. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank The closing you. date that it's we're- the 21st. the 21st of May. <coughs> That's when the, the funds would actually be changing. 28th of May. 21st. 21st of May. 21st of May, okay. So almost the same time. <coughs> I yield back. Okay. And also, if you could speak to that cushion again, because you, <coughs> you share with the finance committee, you just need a cushion of the two million. Yes. Really, you actually don't anticipate using it, the two million cushion. You right. just want we to make always, sure it's there. That's why the law allows you to have what they call a working capital. And they do cap it, and the cap is um, the lesser of uh, two amounts. And, and for us, it's the lesser of 5% of prior year expenditures. Right. So we take the maximum cumulative deficit and then we can borrow up to, um, I believe the amount was, <clears throat> we could borrow 17, no, I'm sorry, we could borrow 16.4. Um, but, you know, as a finance committee, this went, ran through the finance committee, we, you know, didn't see the need to have to go all the way to the max. We just said, you know, our maximum cumulative deficit, if things go as planned, is around 12.2. So we were saying around 15 million, about 2.8 million actually, uh, as a cushion for any kind of working capital that we have. Okay. Any other questions from the board? This is unusual. Okay. This is this is not uncommon for Douglas County. Been doing it for the last 10 years. Thank you. No, I think I'm next. So I'm just gonna stand up here. Oh, you're next. <laughs> okay. All right. Next. Um, Tab number 10, approve health care fund, three-year plan, and amend the budget. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> As you know, we have talked about our health care fund um, <clears throat> in, in the past has, you know, our expenditures have exceeded our revenues. The revenues coming from the county's contribution to the plan as well as the employee's contribution to the plan. Um, and speaking with our auditors, they wanted us to be able to um, commit a... Um, a plan or a commitment of future years uh, budgets to uh, lessen the deficit or get eliminate the deficit in this fund. Um, so we've worked with MSI, who is our benefits consultants, um, with our benefits committee, as well as our HR department, and uh, we've decided that, uh, or the auditors agreed that they would give us a three-year plan or give us uh, three years to eliminate this deficit. And so I met with them and um, come up with the first year of 2018. The plan would be um, approximately 1.3 million um, per year reduction to eliminate this um, deficit in three years. Um, 
we would take about 700,000 from the workers' comp fund. Um, know that the workers' comp fund and the health care fund are internal service funds, meaning they're not supposed to make money or lose money over a period of time. You may have one year where you, you have a little bit of gain and you may have the next year where you have a little bit of loss. But over a smoothing it out, you're not supposed to really make or lose money in the fund. This fund right now has about $860,000 positive fund balance. So we're saying let's just take $700,000 out of the workers comp fund, place it in the health care fund. They're both self-insured funds. It's kind of, you know, one versus the other. They're not that much different other than the type of claims that they pay. And then um, we're also requesting um, that we budgeted $6.1 million for a retirement contribution for 2018. And we haven't got the official number yet, but we did meet with our actuaries um, earlier this year, mm -hmm. and they gave us um, what their best estimate would be, and they estimated that our contribution for 2018 would be around $5.5 million. So we're saying let's take that difference of 600000 and let's apply that to, um, to make up for the $1.3. Um, that's the way that we would handle 2018. For 2019 and 2020, <coughs> Uh, the auditors just wanted the board to commit that they understand that the, the budget funds would be committed for 2019 and 2020 when we adopt the budget. Ms. Holland, could you speak to this um, health care fund three-year plan? We talked about it was a deficit for probably the last four years, but in 2017, yes. under this new administration, you had a gain. Yes. Uh, was it $44,000? $44,000, yes, oh, ma'am. Okay. Um, that's one thing that the auditors uh, commended us on. They said, okay, you know, we're going to give you three years because we see that the deficit really grew. It's not something that's been going for years. The majority of the deficit has been within the past, you know, three or four years. So um, 2017 was the first year that um, we, our revenues exceeded our expenditures. So they saw that we're working with our benefit consultants. We're making plan changes. We're let, letting them look at their expertise and the way they trend things to set a budget um, versus the way we set a budget. With healthcare claims, you can have one year where claims spike up, and then you can have another year where you have good, you know, a good year and you don't have um, as high claims. Our past claims for the past three years have been around $13 million. For 2018, we budgeted $14.4 million because that was the number by MSI, our benefit consultants, to budget for. I hope that if trends stay the same, that we'll be at $13 million. Mm -hmm. So that excess could actually go toward the deficit, and we could actually probably get rid of the deficit even sooner than the three years. It could be two years. Mm -hmm. But we just won't know that until the claims process and we get through the end of the year. But we are taking their expertise and their trend data with our claims and budgeting it more accordingly to what they say is going to happen or what should happen versus looking just at our trends that we've been doing in the past. When you say they say, is that uh, MSI? MSI, okay. yes ma'am. Mm -hmm. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners? Commissioner Geiger. The only reason I'm getting to talk so much is because Mike and Henry's not here today. <laughs> I have to talk three times as much to cover it. Yes. <laughs> okay, uh, Jennifer, this is something I have <clears throat> voiced my concern about in every uh, budget process we've gone through in the recent years about the deficit in this. Although we paid it, it's coming out of our, our funds. But it concerns me, and I, I, I emailed you mm -hmm. about the Workman's Comp. Fund, you're going to leave a balance of one point uh, uh, 160,000 in workman's comp, and I asked you how much is the average expenditures out of that account, and it was what? Um, 650,000. So, are we not creating another deficit? No. Uh, because I remember uh, years <coughs> where we did have a deficit mm -hmm. in this. So we're not going to if we spend 600. Thousand um, dollars, and we only have 160 in the account. That's not going to create a deficit in the workman's comp. No, ma'am, because the the claims that we are paying for this year say end up being 650. They were budgeted for. We did not pull out of fund balance to to pay for those claims. So that 860,000 that's sitting in fund balance, 
sitting there, there's, it's not earmarked for anything. It wasn't earmarked for the 2018 budget. We, we made or we are making contributions from the general fund to the workers' comp fund in 2018 to cover 2018 claims. We're not using fund balance to cover those claims for 2018. You say we have a big workman's comp claim. Where would that money come from? I mean, we never know. Uh, we never know. Yeah. The trends, though, um, are showing, thanks to Matt Laverne, he's done a great job. Our claims are almost half of what they've been in the past, you know, seven he does to do ten. A wonderful job. You know, we, you know, and, you know, again, that's another, just like healthcare, workers' comp. I think we had one year where claims really spiked up, but it was because of some settlements we had that were done. Well, you what, know. what would happen if we had large claims for workman's comp this year over and above what you got in the fund out? Well, it would have a deficit and then we would address it in next year's budget. Okay, so we could create a deficit is what I'm saying. Uh, that was my concern. Yeah. But the six fifty Peter No. Borrowing from Peter and Peter. I wouldn't so. recommend <laughs> take, that's why I also, you know, really the way the auditors even looked at it i mean we really could take the full 860 out of the fund balance and workers comp and apply it to the health care but i just felt safer to say okay if our claims are around you know six hundred thousand dollars a year you know that's what almost 30 percent of um a fund balance about 25 percent that we're leaving in fund balance in the workers comp by leaving one hundred and sixty thousand dollars <coughs> fund balance just in case we have something that comes out during the year. I didn't want to drain it dry and then be robbing Peter to pay Paul. I wanted to leave something in there and enough for a, you know, a major claim or a, a, a spike in claims. But if something happens and, you know, I hope that it does it in the past, I don't have that data in front of me, but I want to say the past five to seven years, it's been trending downward. Um, I mean, we were spending sometimes between seven to eight hundred thousand dollars in claims, um, and now you See, know. It's accurate. Mm -hmm. We had seven hundred thousand. Yes. In workman's comp. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so that that was my concern is, uh, you know, taking that balance down so low. Right. And then what if we have a big claim? Right. But we would take it out of where? It would. We, say we had big claims. <laughs> if we had a large claim. You'd have to come out of the balance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <coughs> Is Pauline's killing me? Do you have any other questions or comments? <coughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Tab, thank you. <coughs> I'll do it at home. <coughs> Tab number 11. Authorization to approve a purchase and sell agreement to sell back a cat paper to Yancey Brothers. Uh, company in the amount of $92,000 and amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Director Valentin, <coughs> how are you this morning? I'm doing great. Thank you. Uh, morning, Madam Chair, Commissioner. This is the last action item on a series Madam of chair, actions. You might need to stop for a minute because you're not in quorum. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, you can hold on. Commissioner, I have to step out for a minute. Thank you. You're back on. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Because there's no quarrel. Yeah, I said you're the quarrel. Thank you. I just got to get some water. Thank you, Attorney. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Uh, this is the last action in a series of actions that actually started back in 2012 with a lease uh, agreement that the county entered into. There were five items on that agreement. And um, I believe it was either in October or in November of last year, uh, the board uh, agreed, approved to uh, sell the old paver back to Yancey. And uh, they, uh, even though the, it was agreed and approved last year, they agreed to leave it with us until they deliver the new paper that was purchased. <coughs> They've done that now. Uh, as you know, and uh, this action is actually to transfer title of the old paper back to Nancy. Uh, they will pay the county $92,000, and we're also asking that uh, you allow the, uh, the budget to be amended to, to account for that $92,000 coming back in to the transportation uh, uh, budget so that we can utilize it for uh, purchase of additional equipment. 
Uh, Madam Chair, we asked Miguel to put this back on, even though the agreement contained a self-effectuating clause to some degree because titles changing hands, we want the board to approve <coughs> your authority to sign it rather than you just sign it. So that's why it's back on. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners regarding this item? Thank you. Wait, yes, we have one, one question, way. Commissioner. It does go back in your bag. That's what, go into the general. That's what he's requesting. That's what, that goes back that's what I'm requesting. requesting. So that he can purchase a piece of equipment. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And you're back. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Discussion item. Um, and we will uh, table number 12. Uh, until all the commissioners are here, we need a, um, I want all five here so we can discuss the naming of the new tag, tax and tag appraisal GIS facility um, in Douglas County. Right now it's quote unquote the Bleakley building, but we will have a formal <laughs> name real soon. All right. Right. Uh, right. Are there any other questions from the Board of Commissioners? <clears throat> At this time, Attorney Bernard, do we need to go into executive session? We do for all three litigation, personnel, and real estate. I'm sure. Okay. Uh, do we have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. We have a um, motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, well, the motion carries, and uh, we'll take a 10 minute break. And I'll see you all back in here momentarily. Thank you. All right, at this time, our work session is back into, we're back into session. Um, any other concerns or questions from the Board of Commissioners? Okay. No, from you, County no, Administrator. Okay. Uh, at this time, thank you for participating in county government, and this work session is adjourned. Thank you.